Welcome to CNN 10 on this February 10th. Extra credit if you're watching this at 10:10. My name is Carl Azus. One big question that many countries have been focused on this year is will Russia invade Ukraine? This is a country on its western border. Russia does not like the possibility that Ukraine could join NATO, an alliance of dozens of European nations, the US and Canada. But that's something that Ukraine's president wants to do. His government has received weapons and equipment from the US and other NATO countries. Russia has given its support to rebels in eastern Ukraine who want closer ties to Russia and have been fighting Ukrainian government forces. So there's already international involvement in what's happening here. What's unknown is what happens next. Russia has repeatedly denied that it's planning to invade Ukraine, but it's built up a huge force of troops and equipment along the border. More than 100,000 Russian forces are estimated to be there, with thousands more expected in the coming days. NATO members have been working together to discourage Russia from invading Ukraine. They've threatened heavy sanctions, penalties on Russia's economy if it does. But Ukraine is not currently a member of NATO, so a Russian attack may not automatically trigger a broader conflict between Russia and NATO. There's just so much that's unclear at this point. Some analysts have suggested that Russia may be building up a show of force to try to intimidate NATO, maybe to get it to promise that Ukraine won't ever join. Some have suggested that Russia wouldn't have sent so many troops here if it wasn't planning an invasion, and that's something the U.S. says it's preparing for. For some Ukrainians near the border, there's no choice but to wait and see and prepare as best they can. Kharkiv is Ukraine. Glory to Ukraine. Russian troops and ships muster on land and at sea. And few places in Ukraine feel more vulnerable than Kharkiv. Kiev is only 30 miles from the Russian border. It's a city of about a million and a half people. At least 75% of them speak Russian as a mother tongue. And demonstrations like this are important because this city could be one of the first to get attacked in the event of an invasion. Volodymyr Zelensky, the president, has warned as much. And US officials are saying that Vladimir Putin could order an attack at any time. Every day I'm trying to be calm and I'm trying to go through my daily routine, but I'm trying to have the thought, okay, where are my documents, uh, where is food, uh, where is my mom, do I have enough money? In a city that's been identified as a potential Russian target by the Ukrainian president, there are attempts to carry on as normal. But for many, this is the new normal. I don't want uh, to flee, so I need to protect the city, my home, my family. Ukraine has expanded its military, but it's a long way behind Russia in military might. So it's taking these wrecked T-64 tanks from the 1960s and rebuilding them from the chassis up to rush to the front lines. Much like Ukraine is trying to build and defend a democracy in a landscape much haunted by the Russian-dominated Soviet Union. Sam Kiley, CNN, Kharkiv. Scientists may be a step closer to sustaining nuclear fusion. What does that mean? What could it mean? Nuclear fusion involves joining two or more atoms into a larger atom. This releases a tremendous amount of energy as heat, and nuclear fusion could eventually lead to a sustainable power source that's less pollutive than coal. Scientists have generated fusion energy before. The problem is they've only been able to sustain it for less than two and a half seconds. That wouldn't provide much power. But this week, researchers in the United Kingdom announced they were recently able to generate and sustain fusion for five seconds. That would be enough to power one house's energy for a day, and if they're able to sustain it for longer and still contain the massive amounts of heat, this could eventually power thousands of homes. Nuclear fusion would produce less waste and require smaller amounts of fuel than current nuclear power, which is created through a different process. But experts say mastering and actually using fusion is probably a long way off. 10 second trivia. Name the only team on this list that has not won at least five Super Bowls. Green Bay Packers, Dallas Cowboys, Pittsburgh Steelers, or San Francisco 49ers. 
All of these teams have at least five championship titles except the Green Bay Packers. They've won four. Inflation as it relates to the Super Bowl is our next subject. There's new information due out today concerning the dramatic rise in prices seen over the past year in America. The White House says the data will continue to show a high year-over-year -year inflation rate, and that means Americans won't be getting as much for the dollars they spend. Some economists think the problem could get worse before it gets better, but they are expecting inflation rates to settle down later in 2022. For the time being, the elevated prices could hit Super Bowl fans who live thousands of miles from where the game's being played in California. Playoff time, baby. Games, snacks, drinks. I mean, what else can you ask for, bro, really? Planning a big spread for the big game? Inflation is your uninvited guest. Wells Fargo crunched the numbers. It finds the price tag for your Super Bowl party could be 14% higher than last year, depending on what you serve. The biggest offender? Meat prices. This according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. If you're a fan of chicken wings, prices for fresh and frozen chicken parts are up nearly 12% from last year. Ground beef for your chili? That's 13% more expensive. Forget serving steak. Prices have soared more than 21% from last year. Now, if you want to cut costs, consider hot dogs. Prices have actually slipped. Another way to save money, go big on the chips and dip. Potato chips are only up about 1% from a year ago. Avocados are your wild card. USDA data shows retail prices are up more than 50% from a year ago. Of course, it won't be a Super Bowl party without beverages. A 12-pack of 12-ounce soft drink cans up nearly 12%. Yes, hosting the big game doesn't come cheap this year, but whatever you spend, you're still saving money by celebrating at home. This year's Super Bowl tickets are the most expensive ever. For many people, yelling comes naturally. There are competitions that measure how loudly folks can yell. There are even screamologists, PhDs who study loud human vocalizations. A coach might occasionally yell to be heard above the cheers of the crowd, or maybe just cause anger. One who's famous for this recently couldn't be on the sidelines, but thanks to the magic of social media, we can hear him yell from home. Do you ever yell at the TV like a maniac? Fumai, fumai, fumai! German coach Stefan Baumgart is known for yelling and gesturing at his Cologne soccer team from the sidelines. But when he was sidelined by COVID, all he could do was holler at the TV. He even wore the same hat he wears at games. His daughter posted the rant on TikTok where German fans declared him a legend. He is the best, but the best supporting player had four legs. He nearly killed that dog by sitting on his head. It was as if his dog was trying to calm the coach with a little shoulder rub. Not once, but twice. As one fan wrote in German, I don't want to know what would have happened if FC, the coach's team, would have lost. The team won by a single point, but the true hero is the dog that literally got butted and still managed to act like a goalpost. Genimos, CNN. New York. Some would say with problems there is never need to yell about it, but your voice must find a way to raise some way if there are ways away or if they stay away and there's no way to tell about it. Ice cream, you scream for ice cream, but at the team, that's controversial. Some leave raising voices making noises for used car commercials, but just scan the sidelines. You'll find all kinds when the lines are crossed who strike a vocal cord when points are scored to get their points across. I'm Carl Azus for CNN 10. Today's shout out takes us to Crosby, North Dakota, where we're happy to see the students of Divide County High School.